Good morning YouTube viewers and subscribers. So as you can see I've got an array of tachometers here on my bench today and I kind of want to briefly talk about tachometers and at least my usage of them. So those of you that are into glow engines realize that uh, finding a tachometer nowadays is really kind of a tough thing to do. They just don't seem to be made much anymore and I've got a couple here that aren't made anymore but uh, for the most part what you can get which is very slim pickings would be these two down here uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about those but let me talk specifically about my personal needs for a tachometer and those of you that watch my channel understand that I really can't have a channel at all and do the engine runs that I do without an operational tachometer so the needs of the tachometers that I use are slightly different than those of the average flyer because I need one uh, that first of all can be turned on and stays on and doesn't need to be held to take a reading. I need one that has a display large enough that can be seen on my videos and I also need one that can be uh, used in close enough proximity to the prop that it will display for framing of my videos. So the needs that I have for making videos are a little bit different than what uh, the average person that's just checking, ta uh, checking readings at the field need to be or tuning because of the way I'm trying to shoot videos. With that said, I used to always love this kind. Uh, this is not made anymore and they branded this exact tachometer several different ways. You'd see a hop, hop sometimes it would have a Hobbico label on it. This one has a Tower Hobbies label on it. Pretty decent one. This Globy one, I'm not sure if it still is made or not. It's a pretty crappy one and there's many reasons why I don't use that. But uh, I don't know if those of you know that when you have an optical or a photo resistive, photosensitive tachometer in the presence of uh, fluorescent lights, you should get a reading of about 3600 RPM. And that's kind of the calibration reading and that was something that I found you know, way back in the day of uh, Ace RC. Uh, their analog tachometer you would calibrate it to that. Now this Globy one I've had a lot of issues with this because depending on when you turn it off and turn it on sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Earlier this morning it was only working if I pulled the display up now it seems to be consistently working but I would have it so it would come up showing 48,000 or all F's or whatever so this one I got very frustrated using because it just didn't seem consistent at all. Now, well, during this demonstration is working quite well, but uh, suffice it to say, and I think many of you have had these before, you can't always rely on that thing to be consistent. Uh, this one, reading 3600, 3630, so I'll say that's good. Um, this one here, the Turnigy Tack, I've got the rear cover off of this. Again, 3600. Uh, real quickly, I'll just briefly talk about these two. This one here is actually a laser tachometer, and I'll put links to these two on the on the description of this video. This one I've actually featured a quick look at, and I've actually done a test with it, but I didn't use it any further than that, primarily, and it was actually modified specifically for me too. But it shoots a, a red LED or a laser out. So the only issue that I had with this was that it requires reflective tape to be passed in front of it. Well, you know, that's all well and good, I guess, but it's kind of problematic for me because that means that every single prop I own, I have to go and put two pieces of reflective tape on the damn thing and then hope that I can get it aligned properly so that it's always going to be seeing that. And then, of course, once you add tape to it, you have to rebalance all your props. So, I mean, with the number of props that I've got, this tack just became uh, not really usable for me, even though it's probably a quality device and it'll probably work fine. It's just that I didn't feel like going and putting reflective tape on uh, 50 or 60 different props that I've got, okay, so I want to use this. So, that's kind of out of there. This device here I've never featured on a video before and maybe I will. I'm not going to talk too much about it. I'll put the website for this thing on here. It's called an RC, it's an RC device technology. It's primarily made for helicopter usage, but it does have an optical sensor back here. 
The reason I don't use this thing is because, first of all, framing in a video isn't going to be very good because if it, I have to pass a prop past the optical sensor, like this, then how is anybody going to read the display? So this, it may be fine for uh, you helicopter usage, but for my applications it's really not all that great. Now, let's come to these two pieces of junk. Um, and I don't say that jokingly at all. I had somebody comment on a video saying, hey, I saw that you've got this GT TAC. Uh, which one should I buy, the Turnigy or the GT TAC? Well, the, the answer is you probably don't have much choice. You buy what's going to be available because there aren't many vendors of TACs out there. But in reality, these two things are identical. They're just packaged slightly differently. So they're probably all made by the same people. They probably all have the same exact circuit board because I've spent my entire career working in electronics manufacturing so I know how companies operate and how they market things. Now, you tell me those are made in two separate locations. I don't think so. I think that looks like the exact same thing only packaged differently. Now, if I flip these over, and yes, this GT one still always drains the battery for whatever reason, so it's a complete garbage. Now, if you'll notice, about the only difference in these two units is they have a different size microprocessor. Well, that's not enough to tell me that they're actually very different units because boards get, circuit boards get spun all the time when a vendor of a part goes under or the part becomes obsolete or whatever. So I couldn't tell you which one of these microprocessors is newer. Uh, typically the one that's under this potting one is much smaller so I would tend to think that that might be the newer one and this is an older one. But I don't know for sure. All I can say is that between these two they're both made in the same place. They're both the same circuit board. They're both the same. So if you want to buy one of these it's a crapshoot because sometimes you'll get a good one sometimes you'll get a bad one. This one seems to display fine but uh, I don't have a battery in this because it keeps eating those expensive batteries. But this one seems to be working fine. I'm not really sure why I retired it other than maybe, I don't really know. It seems like it's working fine right now. So I'm probably going to just go back to this. In fact, I could probably even put this exact same circuit board right in this case if I really wanted to because they're the same. So anyway, uh, as far as uh, getting a good tachometer, I don't know what to tell you. There's not a whole lot out there. There's a a place or a tachometer that many people have purchased in the past called a TNC tachometer and I'll put the website link on that. Right now that's saying that those are unavailable um, but it's also a $150 tach and I'm sorry but uh, I have a hard time parting with $150 for a tach even though it's critically important for my channel I just haven't got around to doing that and nor do I really want to pay that kind of money for one especially if I don't have one that I can test out and make sure that it's actually going to do what I need as far as my video requirements. That's why I just go with these cheap ass ones and then sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. But anyway, that's kind of a quick, dirty rundown of the variety of tacks that I have on hand and that I've tried to use in my videos.